Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for your coming and thank you. Oh, yes, I would, I would try to do that. Um, I am Timothy Nyasuru from Malawi, um, Church of Central Africa Presbyterian. I'm the uh, moderator uh, now up to uh, 2017. And uh, I'm presenting on the witchcraft, particularly focusing on the Tumbuka of Northern uh, part of Malawi. Um, so that is my topic. And uh, what I will do is because I've made uh, so many um, uh, slides, I will just show some few pictures and then go to, uh, to some case studies that uh, um, I felt we should share with you. Uh, witchcraft in Malawi is uh, so common, as in many parts of the, uh, the world, particularly Africa. And this is the northern part of Malawi. So um, the research or the information is based on this part. So my home is uh, somewhere between where you see Mzuzu and Rumhi. But Mzuzu is the city where I, where I stay. So this uh, work is concerning that part of the country. I'll begin with slides. Um, which accusations are uh, uh, common? And this is uh, one of the old uh, senior ladies who has been uh, accused of witchcraft uh, by the chief of our village. And he uh, is also uh, a brother-in-law. And she believes she and her husband were targeted because they um, owned a lot of land. Roma has it that the chief now owns their property. And she has been living with her uh, daughter uh, 12 kilometers away from her home. And then she was forced to leave the land. And now that land is uh, uh, belong to other people. And she moved out of that place. This is another old lady, uh, also accused of witchcraft when her uh, village, uh, when her child died. Um, this is a young boy, very young. Um, this sort of 2009, just with her friends and then some people uh, among them said, oh, you're a witch. And he uh, said, uh, he accepted, I'm a witch. And then later on, when he was interrogated, he said, ah, well, but I have dreams like I'm a witch. And then in the end, um, it was found that he, uh, he suffered for no good reason. Uh, among the Tumbuka, you find people uh, who are uh, uh, generally known as witch doctors who are, um, uh, can uh, divine and say it's your uncle who bewitched you or your father and so on. So most of them are uh, uh, in that kind of attire. I think that is their uh, uniform for whatever they do, I would call it. And then this is uh, another uh, uh, young man who is also um, a, a, a witch, and those are the things that he uses. And then here we have the exorcism that is taking place in the church. Um, so I think we saw one of the slides, I think, shown, uh, shown by our brother in the morning. And then this is uh, an old lady 
about 75, uh, between 75 and 80, who was uh, uh, accused of witch, and uh, when she accepted, she was put in prison, and she was in prison for seven years. And that was the day when she was released. Uh, this is a case of a family in the southern part of Malawi. I, I got it that you to say, I'm talking about north, but other parts also of Malawi, you can find such kind of. So these were uh, the, uh, the stories is like, these were the ladies, girls of the same family, three of them. And then uh, uh, within the family, them and their uh, father, and, and they were kind of accusing each other. You, um, the father is accusing the, uh, the daughter and say, well, you, you are witches, you, you, you do oral sex me, and, and so on. Those kind of things came about. And the girls were like so, um, um, uh, it was a time uh, like, uh, not good for them. They ended up uh, committing suicide. So this they did themselves. You see some people there, they came the following day uh, to see what, what has happened. This one is uh, the man in the middle is the director um, of uh, um, Association of Secular Humanism, George Tindwa. Um, he's uh, uh, not far from my place, uh, just beyond the room here as you go down to, 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 to far uh, north of, 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 of Malawi. So he started the, an organization in 2008 uh, trying to deal with witchcraft accusations. He has uh, played a major role in the sense that he, uh, using the constitution of Malawi, which does not accept that witchcraft exists, so he's campaigning against witchcraft accusations. So I thought I should pick him. So he, he has uh, embraced uh, three old ladies that had been accused. And I, I liked the embrace that he has done. I'm like, how uh, if the church could would have the same kind of spirit of siding with the, uh, the suffering. And then this is a, a church context. Uh, the good news is that the church is still very powerful and that is a Sunday service gathering. That is a, a Presbyterian church um, uh, north to uh, about 40 kilometers north to, my, to where I live as a city. Um, as I said, that uh, uh, witchcraft accusations is a, a global mythological issue. We cannot uh, uh, just hear about it, but we can, as a church, participate in getting rid of the problem. And the, the church um, has seen violent acts affecting the lives of people and sometimes even involved. Accusations have been caused a lot, a lot of damage and suffering in society. Vulnerable women particularly, children and old people suffered as we have seen. Um, the issue behind it is that the church has not done enough and the problem that witchcraft accusations is causing is uh, it's hampering the Evangelization. You cannot evangelize uh, effectively if you have the issues that on day to day's uh, ministry these things come. So um, when I look around Malawi, it's only this secular organization that has actually taken a stand to say, let us um, condemn the witchcraft. <coughs> Um, I feel and a strong belief that uh, what I'm writing up to the end 
is contributing to the debate that is taking place regarding witchcraft accusations. And at the end, I've tried to uh, suggest some ways of how we can, uh, we can participate in dealing with witchcraft. And I'm also saying as a church, we cannot be left behind. Let us do our role. Um, this was the, um, the design of how I did my kind of research. Some of the things that I will be showing you as the um, case studies have been taken from uh, um, Association of Secular Humanism, two case studies. And then the other two case studies, I was there when it was happening. The accusations were happening. I'm there as a church leader. Um, I think that is the story about where Tumbuga came from. Um, about the, uh, how the uh, ethnic group is, first of all, the population of Malawi, and then uh, how many Christians we have, and then uh, the proportion of Christians, Muslims, and other religions. So Tumbuka people that we were uh, uh, talking about came from uh, uh, Zaire, the present uh, DRC. I was talking with my brother um, Mulumba here that we have so many names that are uh, actually common. When you are speaking about your uh, languages in Congo, I was able to pick it. Yeah, I was like, oh yes, I think we came from Congo indeed. <laughs> so um, uh, when you are talking about the background of how people accuse children to be witches, how do we define witches? Some of the terms are so similar. Just to confirm that we we, we come from the same place, the same area. But that was many, many years back, about 16th century. So uh, despite Christianity in majority, as we have said, 80% Christianity, 15% Muslims, and 5% other religions. But in spite of having 80% as a Christian country, you find these witchcraft are still taking place. And, and the question comes, why? So, when you live among the Tumbuka people, uh, like any other places, you find uh, there is a lot of suspicion, fear. From the time you are born, young, uh, you find, uh, they tell you the stories of um, uh, how your life can be interfered by somebody. Um, when John Juice was talking about him uh, stealing a chicken of a certain an old lady, I also had uh, somebody in mind that he was very old, and they were used to tell us to say, don't go this route in the evening, because this is where uh, this man passes. And when he has just touched your head, then you will be sick and died. You, 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 you die. And, and there was no kind of uh, tangible evidence to say if he, that old person has touched the person is going to die. I think just to tell us that I think we are in that kind of situation where we live in fear. Um, while Malawi, particularly the Tumbuka, or Malawi as a whole, there's strong belief in witchcraft, but probably from the time of missionaries, I uh, said, well, uh, witchcraft does not exist. And the constitution of Malawi was made in 1911. 1911, when we are still under British protectorate, under the Scottish missionaries, and uh, that has never been amended. The constitution is being reviewed, but it doesn't touch this part of witchcraft. So on the constitution of Malawi, it says no witchcraft. Anybody who has accused somebody of witchcraft, then he who is accusing has a problem. Um, but, but people have that kind of belief. And, and there's also in the constitution um, that uh, 
uh, everybody has the right to belief, has the right to religion. So some, when they look at witchcraft, they look at a belief that somebody has chosen, then, then, then we, it, it, it kind of um, contradicts. So there's that kind of debate to say maybe one of the two should be removed or should be changed. Because if somebody says witchcraft does not exist, and somewhere say there's a right to any belief, therefore witchcraft is a certain belief that people follow. So there is that kind of um, uh, debate within the constitution, probably to be amended. But with that uh, um, organization, they would want to stick to the statement there is no witchcraft. So accusations are not entertained. So this is about that. Uh, I, will, I will skip that one. Um, let me just go to case study one. Uh, I, this is the lady, 80 years, suspected uh, in December 2011. Um, and a, a witch hunter or a witch doctor is saying, uh, if you want to, uh, to be free from witchcraft, give me 5,000 Malawi kwacha. To a Malawian uh, local person, it's a lot of money. And uh, she had to borrow the money and pay it. Uh, and uh, uh, she's in debt. And uh, she did not report to the police as she thought it was normal. You know, some people can suffer the problem because they don't know where to take the problem to. So you feel as if you are really guilty, but because you don't know where you, you can take the problem to. Oh, why am I so fast? Um, so after uh, that association was contacted, then they came in, uh, they um, uh, talked over issues, and then he, um, the brother, after hearing, said, well, I think uh, we are going to be assisted here. So Pauline later on was relieved from the threat of being accused of witchcraft. Because of that, that intervention that came from the association. Uh, some lessons um, I'm, I'm taking from that is uh, this lady is old, and the villagers seem not to like the old people. Uh, there's many stories where an old person would be accused of being a witch. Um, uh, Jairus also is playing a role. From the same person, the strong people would like to get money. The witch doctor is charging 5,000 for him. Uh, then uh, this uh, another case study. Let me, um, another old lady, 75. Also um, in that kind of situation, they decide to de demolish her house because in the house she keeps witchcraft. So the witch doctor comes to say, let us demolish your house if we, you accept that we get rid of witchcraft. And the house is demolished, then she's left without a house. That can uh, give trauma the rest of your life as, as a person. Um, some lessons from there. Uh, this, this house, as I said, to a Malawian, if you have an, a, a house with tin roof with some bricks, they would count you to be somebody. And uh, the people who were actually wanting him to, her to suffer like that were relatives. And the witch, the witch comes, and then uh, uh, the witch doctor comes, and they demolish the house. And the relatives laugh at her. We are now the same. You don't have a house. Um, I was, I, I'm, I'm so touched that the, the association is playing that major role, but the church does not do much. So I'm trying to say, why are the association doing that? I think as a church, we need to do something. Remind me of time, uh, uh, moderator. Two o'clock already. Yeah. My goodness. All right, fine. Um, then, uh, um, just roughly, the church on witchcraft, I did the research in 2010. And the church, apart from um, the pastoral work 
that it does. It is so strict on a person who has been involved in witchcraft uh, kind of uh, a consultation or, or finding out. So anybody who has gone to a witch doctor would be under discipline. So witchcraft here is falls under a divination. It's a, one of the disciplinary cases that when somebody has gone to a witch doctor, then he's going to be under discipline. Um, these are some of the case studies that I may not go through. That a, a pastor is the, is, uh, is I passed away, and the session clerk, who is very close to him, they accuse each other, and the pastor dies because he has been bewitched by the session clerk. At the time of uh, uh, interrogating, the session clerk, who is close to him, accepted. After the funeral was over, he changed his mind. He refused, and he took the accusers to court. He said, I accepted because I was fearing the danger, because that was at the funeral. But now that I'm away from the funeral, you can take me anywhere. I deny I'm not a witch. Um, some few things that the church would do. As some had uh, talked already in the morning, I think witchcraft cannot be denied that it's a, a spiritual issue. Some have said pastoral issue. I think if we, as a church, we do the spiritual empowerment, we do a lot of Christian education, and then also economic empowerment. Uh, spiritual empowerment would go back to, let us read the Bible, what the word of God says about witchcraft, about the sinner, how we handle a sinner. Education, ignorance, kills. If you don't know, then definitely you end up suffering for no good reason. So education would be important. And then economic empowerment, some people suffered because of um, uh, poverty. Uh, those who are uh, better than the rest, maybe the cases of witchcraft are lower. Although somebody was saying it depends. If you are uh, uh, so rich, would you want to protect your wealth by consulting a witch doctor? But when you, you, you compare where it's, it is more common, you find it is in the place where people are poor and ignorant. Okay. But I'm, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. If there are any questions.